Okay, so I made slides. It's yeah. Kind of like, what? Wow. This is crazy. Oh. What is going on here? First time ever, huh? Uh, pretty much. Yeah. I, I'm new with this whole keynote thing, so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, so uh, over the years, I've been working with WordPress for over 10 years, probably at this point, um, and uh, I've come to know through experience and through friends that security is a very important part of, of development practices. Um, first. Um, <laughs> This guy, um, Mr. Tony Lifehack Perez, is uh, he works for Security Security, um, Dre's partner over there, and um, he has shown me with his hands and with just his computer what um, what he can do to you, and and he said something kind of like this <laughs> at one point, uh, bro, if you don't escape your data. You'll never escape the hurt I'm gonna put on you. Some, <laughs> something like that. Wow. Um, that was so amazing impression. Tony, that was yeah. that's Tony. But it was more like Cuban coffee, like fired up. It was. It sounds about right. It's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, if you've never met Tony, he will scare you straight. Um, he will make you do all the developer -y things you need to do. Uh, and the second one um, is the Dre. I'll choke you out, Armada. <laughs> uh, also from Security Security, um, this is kind of what you make, he makes you feel like when you don't do the right things. And he said to me one thing, something like this, look, there's bad people out there trying to do all sorts of salty stuff to comb your site. They're not going to be ready for that. Come on now. Don't let them make you look silly. Also, don't touch my hat. He said something like that. Oh, that's pretty close. Something like that. Yeah. Paraphrasing. Yeah. Um, that's quite the thing tacos in there. Yeah, well, yeah, he's got the, the taco tattoo now, so. Um, so, given that those are our threats, dangerous people out there, um, how, do you, how do you protect yourself in that age? So this is a video from a guy named Mark Jaquith. He's one of the lead developers for the WordPress project. Um, this is a pretty old video. It's a WordCamp talk that he gave in WordCamp Phoenix. Um, but it's really, really good. It talks about all the different pieces of, of um, securing your code. And specifically why I like this video is because in 2009, um, I went to WordCamp New York and competed in a plugin competition, much like Plugin Palooza. Um, and we ended up winning, but not before um, he and a couple of judges sat up there and completely pwned my plugin. <laughs> um, and so, you know, live on stage in front of a couple hundred people, he live hacked my plugin, which was sucky, but it, it kind of woke me up as to like, yeah, I didn't even think about why people would do that or anything like that. So just really the ultimate, you know, thing is that, you know, you need to be paying attention to all this stuff. There's another um, article, this is also a little bit old, but um, still covers a ton, a ton of data. And a lot of things in this space haven't really changed. How to protect the data that's coming in and how to protect your users when you're putting um, data out. All these links are at the end, I'll, I'll kind of go through them. Um, but read this, it's a really long read, but um, talks about a bunch of good stuff there. Um, so I've got um, five <laughs> Five kind of things that you want to, or I guess it's maybe more than five now, I added some. Um, so that's awesome. <laughs> but um, these things you want to do to make sure that your your code and everything that you're putting out there <laughs> is, um, you know, is going to be safe for, for end users. So the first one is keeping your development environment clean, right? This, this talks about your computer, wherever you do your development, keeping it clean. Um, Second is using core code versus your code whenever possible. And then the rest of these are things that WordPress helps you do. Um, there's functionality within WordPress to help you do these. As long as you're doing them, you're gonna be protecting you know, various uh, vulnerabilities that could be within web programming. So validating refers, validating data inputs, sanitizing them, you know, getting rid of all bad data, things like that. And then when you're printing stuff back out to the browser, you're escaping it so that even if you happen to have bad data, it's not going to do anything bad. Before you move on, yes. can you back up and explain a why for item number two? Because um, <laughs> number two uh, is that 
WordPress core code has been battle tested over the course of more than 10 years at this point. And there are things that we have learned, security teams have learned that you may not be thinking of as a developer, right? And so there is an entire security team in the WordPress space that, you know, test these things over and over and over. And, you know, millions of websites out there that are, are running the code and being checked against for security vulnerabilities, things like that. So those, those um, first of all, are more security hardened, but in cases where you're deploying to multiple environments, say you're a plugin developer, core code is built to run on more systems than you're probably thinking about. And I'll show some examples of, of that there. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the reason why. Uh, I've met lots of people that think they're really good with this kind of stuff. Yeah, but absolutely. They're not as good as the brain trust. And like you said, there are dozens more people that look at that code than yeah. built your code. So use, use this stuff. And, and ultimately, cool. there's there's oftentimes where I've found where I write something, I'm like, you know what, how can this not be in core? I'm writing it, and then I'll find the function somewhere in core. Yeah. It's not documented anywhere, but sure enough, like there's a there's a function for it. Yeah. You know, it just may be a knowledge thing. So there's you know resources for that as well. Yeah. Um, so the first one, um, keeping your development environment clean, really. It, it can be any platform, Mac, PC, Linux, whatever it is, there's, there's issues with all three. You're not safe from viruses. Um, wherever you are, even if you're on a Mac, be protected. Uh, if you're on Linux, make sure you're patching your Linux um, installation because you're mostly responsible for that kind of thing. And if you're on the PC, <laughs> just, just yeah. assume that you're already okay. compromised, right? <laughs> um, and, and as soon as you can get past the, it's not me, it's somebody else, like, you're not going to be deploying code that has a Trojan that's sitting on your on your laptop. Um, my favorite thing in this space is called Kaspersky antivirus. Um, I use it. I learned it from Dre and Tony. Both of them use it on their their systems. So I I trust it. Um, it's always been really strong. Um, so if if you don't have an antivirus, even on a Mac, I would recommend it. It's it sits there running in the background and just. Peace of mind. Right. What's that? Another one's good. The Mac is malware bytes. Malware bytes. Yeah. Cool. You mean just like on the computer you're working on, right? Not okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, server side is a whole other thing, right? There, there should be some sort of antivirus running on the server, but yeah. hopefully your host is taking care of that for you, um, and you don't have to worry about that end of thing. So WordPress core code versus your code. So I think this is a, a really good example that I've seen a number of times in developing other people's plugins, like working on things, is you're trying to integrate with another service. And so you know, a lot of, a lot of the basic ways in PHP to do that are with curl. Um, curl is a library that you can use to request a remote resource, pull data back from it, say you're using an API, something like that. All this, all this data that you're using might not work. There may be a, a server that doesn't have curl, and your code's not going to run. Okay, so that's that's a problem, obviously. Um, in in this particular case, um, I'm using on the WordPress side WP Remote Get, which will do the same thing. It actually will check to see if curl is available and use it if possible. Um, and it also uses like um, fopen. There's tons and tons of different alternatives baked into that one function call um, that uh, that you're getting just by using the core APIs. So there are things built into core, these different APIs that that are doing work that you shouldn't have to re reproduce. Um, does that make sense? Good. Okay. Um, so getting into when you're developing your code, you should trust nothing. Right? I mean, as a developer, you want to be skeptical of any piece of data that you get, whether it's a string of text or anything, escape it, sanitize it, because you never know when that file is going to be compromised and someone's going to put a base64 encoded string into your string, and then the entire system is going to get hosed. Okay, so trust nothing. Um, imagine that everything is insecure. Um, the first set of this is uh, cross-site request forgery. So this is known when, um, this is what happens when 
uh, someone is giving you a link that um, you can click on and it's gonna go do an action on your site, but they're making you think that it's a safe thing to do, but in fact, it's something else. So a good example would be, you get an email that says, oh cool, this is a new person who's gonna connect with me on LinkedIn. I'll just click this confirm button. But underneath this, this link is actually, because you're not seeing it, because it's HTML, is actually a, a link to your site that's telling you to trash a post, okay? This, this is silly, you know, obviously you can get it back, but something, something like this could be um, taken advantage of. What happens is it's, it's taking your trust with your, when in your browser, your cookie, and saying, hey, I can do this action because I'm a privileged user, so if I click on that link that someone's faked me into clicking on, then they can get me to do something on my site that they wouldn't be able to do without me, right? It's, it's nothing that you would ever see unless, like, anytime I get an email like this, I hover over the link just to make sure, okay, good, it's a cool, it's a cool URL, right? So again, you're just blindly trusting because it has LinkedIn at the top, it's a LinkedIn email, or a PayPal email. How many times have you gotten a fake PayPal email and you're like, this looks legit, but it's not? Bank of America. Right, they're, they're so good. Yeah, they're like perfect. It's it's yeah, and they update them all the time. You're like, is this legit? Is it not? You know, I don't know. So don't trust links that you click on. Don't. I mean, especially if it's a cloak link, like a Twitter short link or a Bitly or anything like that. Like you should on Bitly, you should turn on the show me the URL before going to the site, so that you can preview what you're doing, so you don't get hosed. Um, so one of the ways that WordPress um, actually takes care of this is that you can set up nonces for all the actions of your code. This nonce is a number used once, it's randomly generated within WordPress. It's based on time, it's based on your user ID, your permissions, all the things that WordPress does to protect you. It allows you to, the first one here, WP nonce URL, you can use that to, to create a nonce, which is a, a, a new um, parameter at the end of the URL. It will add it to the URL. So in the previous slide, if you had this action but there was no nonce and you're checking for your nonce in your code, this function wouldn't run even if they linked you to this URL. Um, you can do basically three different kinds of um, creating nonces. One is the URL. One will actually um, generate just the value, so if you want to put it in a hidden input or you want to attach to a URL, whatever you want to do, you can create it that way, get the value. And the last one will actually generate a um, a refer, so it tells you where you're coming from, as well as um, the nonce itself is a hidden element. So it'll create the HTML for you, so you can use that um, in a form element. Just say WP create nonce, and it will output the code for you. You might be getting into it, but do you have any examples of uh, use cases for the nonce? Um, anytime you're submitting a form, anytime you're clicking an action link, Really, any time that you need to verify that this person clicked it within a period of time and they're privileged to do it, that's when you want to really create it, uh, a nonce any time you're submitting a form. So form submission is generally red flag. Form submission yeah. always have it. Any time you're sending data to the server. Yes. Uh, I also do that for Ajax calls. Yep, Ajax calls too, yeah. Why? Yeah. Because so I can verify that that again. Ajax call is generated by me for your logged in session. Because imagine not by him for my logged in session. Right. Yeah. So uh, imagine. Um, imagine sure. there's a link that that is like I'm able to find out what the AJAX URL is to change some data, and there's nothing that is protecting that besides that that cookie. If it's not tied back to me as a user and I'm the one who's logged in doing it, it it will break. If I'm using a nonce. It will go through if I'm not checking against nonces because it's a valid action. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. But if I'm doing just regular, well, I don't say regular, but <laughs> <laughs> um, you mentioned Ajax. If I'm just maybe hitting the REST API, just mm -hmm. grabbing data, that's not a nonce thing. Well, I'm just pulling data. when you're pulling data, it's not as bad, <laughs> but there are some. Uh, gets some pulls of data that you might want to have protected so that somebody who's not logged in won't be able to access that information. Right. So that'd be another use case for a nonce. Mm -hmm. For, for example, it, any sort of user data, 
you would yeah. want to have nonces and things like that to protect yeah. against them. But without it, if you're at a Starbucks or something, and I'm watching your data mm -hmm. over an HTTP conversation, and I can see the, the URL that you're going to, all that information on how to delete that post yep. is in the clear going from your computer to the Wi-Fi at Starbucks. It's fun. I can replay that. <laughs> right. Part of the nonce is a timestamp. So it's, <laughs> that nonce is only good for 15 minutes. So if I try to replay that tomorrow, it's going to fail. I think nonces are good for 12 hours, but they are tied back to the user. So again, in the same scenario, yeah. replaying that same URL, even with the nonce on it, because that person's not logged in, will still break because they're not logged in. But the other thing is, as you said, it's a nonce is an acronym. It's number used once. Mm -hmm. Once you use that nonce, right. it's no good anymore. Yeah. So even if you replay it one second later, it was already used. It's not good anymore. So that's why nonces are really good. Mm -hmm. If you were over a secure connection at Starbucks, where is there such a thing? There is not such a thing. <laughs> I, will, I will tell you, and again, why I chose those two people specifically at the beginning is because we've been at WordCamps hanging out and they'll be sitting in the lobby just listening to the Wi-Fi and you wouldn't uh -huh. believe the things that put people put into their browsers and hotels. They walk into Bank of America. Oh yeah, really? absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. Just load up Wireshark and just hit like listen, yeah. and you just sit there and watch all of the noise go through. Yeah, and it's like, oh look, here's Facebook thing. Here's Facebook thing. Yeah, I mean, well, well, again, again, you could be a man in the middle. Though. Yeah, yeah. I, I can set up a, a Wi-Fi right. that looks like it's Starbucks. Well, I see that. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> pineapple or yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, so yeah, bad things can happen. Yeah. Bad things, uh, assume, again, assume bad things are happening yeah. all, the time. all the time. Every time. And just assume that's happening. Yeah. And even if it's not you, take your lowest end user, grandma over there who's uh, sitting at Starbucks enjoying her latte, she could easily be compromised in that same scenario where you're not. So protect your end users as much as you would be protecting yourself. I know. <laughs> be afraid. Yeah. It's so like you have to be wired, but like you have to be in a secure space. Yes. Like, yeah. Like, so it's plugged in, but then there's no around. With the right. cone of silence. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Little dog thing. Oh, wow. Oh. Right. But don't don't feel so bad because even if you're wired, you're still not protected. I mean, I work in rock, so like it's a co-working space. So it's like right. you're all sharing the same. Yeah. Yes. Get yourself one of those little Wi-Fi portable Wi-Fi things and use that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so again, um, <laughs> step one. Dollar bill. Step one of this is generating a nonce. The second step is actually making sure that that nonce is valid because I could just send any number, of, any amount of data in the nonce and if we're not checking against it, we're just checking against the presence of a nonce, that's not good enough. So again, WordPress gives you some handy functions. Verify nonce will just take you basically, when you create the nonce, you give it an action that you're doing and it generates like a little hash. Um, and when you, when you do the verify nonce, you give it the same action and it takes those two things WordPress has its salts and all that kind of stuff, so it knows what it should be on both ends. And if you're able to verify it, cool, go forward. If not, you should bail immediately. Um, and check admin for, refer does one extra step. It all it does check the the nonce, but it also checks that it's the request is coming from an admin screen. So you would use these mostly in like the back end. The the check admin refer you would use mostly in the back end of WordPress if you're submitting a form or an options page or anything like that. Um, you're going to want to use check admin refer. Make sense? Good. Yeah. Uh, okay, so cross site scripting. Um, this is when some bit of code is used <coughs> in, um, uh, in the client side of the browser. So let's say somebody submits something that has script tags in it, uh, a form element that has script tags, and you're not. Um, escaping that on the way out, um, those things can be run on client side if you're just printing them out, and it will allow them to do any sort of thing with whatever that user is. So even though they're not mimicking the user, they're able to take the logged in user's data and transmit it somewhere else so that they can then uh, use that, uh, use those credentials and things like that. Um, so ways ways around that. Um, validating the user input, making sure that there isn't any bad data, things like script tags, or people are using quotes to escape out of a text field, things like that. 
um, you're going to want to sanitize. So um, you are first, uh, sorry, validating the user input is saying like, if you're expecting a number, make sure it's a number first before you do anything with it. Or if you're expecting a phone number format, do uh, make sure it's in a format, a, a pro the format that you're looking for. Um, sanitizing is when you're stripping things out. It can change the data. So let's say somebody puts in a bunch of data and they use bold tags, for example, but you don't accept any tag, you strip out the tags. That will be removed and it may change the meaning of that data, but at least you know that data is safe. Um, and then on the, on the far side, when you're printing it out to the browser, escaping it within the context that it's being displayed um, will allow you to get rid of things like quotes or um, convert them to um, entities if they're inside of an attribute or something like that so that your, their, your users are not able to break outside of your markup and, and compromise their, the browser. So um, one of the first steps is whitelisting the data. Don't just blindly save data to your database without looking at it. So in this example, the actual post is this. I've got a script tag set to you know a URL or a um, uh, field within the post array. And then I've got the proper data, which is the email. And this would be bad as if you loop through all the posts and just blindly saved it as post meta without even checking it. Versus here at the bottom, we're going, okay, we only want this E variable and we're going to sanitize it using the sanitize email function and we're going to get it strictly from that, from the post array. So the difference here is you're not checking the data at all. Here you're getting only the specific um, data that you're looking for and populating that and sanitizing into the database. Does that make sense? Good? Yeah. yeah. All right. So the opposite of that is, um, is blacklisting it and it basically means you are not going to accept this data unless it's in the right format. So here we've got, um, again, this E variable within the post array. Here we're just saving it. So if I put in, instead of E, uh, email at domain, I put in, you know, this is bad data. It's not a valid email format. It doesn't matter. It's going to go save into the database like that. And that may screw up some of the programming that you've built to like link up an email address or something like that. But worse, it could compromise your system by, you know, if you're just printing it out, it could, again, be, become a script tag or something like that, that someone's alerting the cookie or <coughs> sending the cookie off somewhere. Um, and then something good would be checking, again, here's the data we're checking against. If, if it is an email, then we go forward, sanitize the email again to make sure there's no bad characters, and then save it that way. Good? So only save it if it's valid data. Uh, again, um, WordPress has a bunch of built-in functionality for sanitizing data. Um, a lot of it's a lot of them start with sanitize underscore. So if you um, look up um, um, so a lot of these um, a lot of these things that are built in, um, you can just search right within uh, the WordPress codex. There is a link for this, all the sanitizing functions that I have here in the presentation um, that we'll go through. But, um, but just be sure, like, again, don't raw, don't save raw data. Make sure you're sanitizing in the right context. So previously I was using sanitize underscore email because I was looking at email addresses. Here, this is just a text field, so I'm saving it as a text field, a sanitizing text field, which will do things like stripping tags, and, um, and other things to make sure there's no bad data um, for a text field in there. And once I know that it's safe, then I can go ahead and save it in the same way I would have normally. Okay, so um, the, the last one would be um, on output. When you're displaying a web page and you have a bunch of dynamic content saved in your database, um, hopefully you've been sanitizing on the way in so your data shouldn't have any problems going out. But again, like I said before, if one of your files has been compromised, your system has been compromised some other way, and somehow this data is being augmented with some sort of base 64 thing, um, it doesn't matter because you're going to be good about escaping it uh, within the right context. So here we're getting the data out and just blindly echoing it out to the browser. Bad. Don't do it. Um, here, if you're just printing out 
you know, write to the browser, not within an element or anything like that. Escape HTML will escape it. Will um, it will convert things to HTML entities. So like, you know, the the left angle bracket will become ampersand lt semicolon, so that it can't be executed by the browser. It, it treats it as text only. Um, if you're doing something within HTML, you have an attribute. Escape attribute would be what you'd use there. Again, WordPress has um, a bunch of different things that you can use for escaping. So escape URL, escape SQL, attribute HTML, things like that. Um, they're, yes? Oh, I would say they're all mostly prefaced with escape underscore, yeah. On the Alfred, where do you pull that information through the Alfred? Is that the library inside the Alfred? Yeah. yeah, your oh the WordPress yeah. thing. Yeah, so it's um I use um Dash for documentation. Oh, okay. And this is an integration with Word the WordPress Dash library and yeah, Alfred. Okay. Yeah. Next level. Yeah. Next level basically. <laughs> uh, okay. So we got that. Okay, so um I've compiled these links. Not that I want you to like take a picture or something of these, but um I know, I know Dave was going to go do some research later, but essentially um, I've got Mark's uh, talk, the um, Tuts Plus tutorial on, on that stuff. There's like three or four different, um, these, these top three right here are the ones that I kind of covered in my presentation. This other one, the developer.wordpress.org one, it, it covers specifically security in plugins, so it goes far beyond just escaping and stuff with data and just talks about security in general, and actually has a great resource on plugin development uh, otherwise, so check that out. Um, WordPress.org has a security page, um, which I think, I feel like is new, I don't think I've seen it um, in a while, but um, they've put a bunch of things about how it's been battle tested, how it's on the top 10 best CMS for OSEC, um, uh, you know, just basically how they go about breaking it so that they know it's it's very secure. Um, so the the um, I would definitely check that page out. Just again, so if you're selling WordPress, this is a great page to kind of like calm people's fears about oh, WordPress is like hacked up or whatever. Um, I'll I'll post these slides on the meetup too, so that you guys have all access to that. Most of the time when you hear about WordPress security being compromised, it's a plugin that isn't doing this stuff. Right. It's not WordPress for it. Yeah. So it's somebody else right. not dotting all the I's and Absolutely. doing their homework. Yeah. And, and WordPress, the security team does, um, you, you may not know this, but if you have a plugin that's installed from WordPress.org and a major ca catastrophic like security vulnerability is found in a plugin, they actually have the power to push an update to every WordPress site that's using it if it's that bad. Um, there was, I, I want to say there was a security one really in Yoast <laughs> SEO a while back that warranted that because so many people use that plugin yeah. that it was like this could take down almost every WordPress website. Yeah. So they pushed, they pushed an update to it, then went back and helped Yoast fix it. Um, and it happened very quickly. But no one had to click update this plugin. It just happened. Um, so again, it's it's not a safeguard. Like you're not always under that protection. But if it's something that is is very very um, you know widespread that could really affect a lot of people, yeah. um, they can do that if they need to. Same yeah. thing with WordPress updates as well. There was another incident I think about two two and a half years ago where several plugins had a similar problem of vulnerability, and they updated half a dozen plugins with millions of users. I think it happened with Tim Thumb, actually. No, it's not Tim Thumb. It no. may have happened with Tim Thumb. I think that was the library. Of, yeah, the one I'm thinking of was not Tim Thumb. Okay. It was a cross-site scripting vulnerability. Okay. Mailbox? No. Okay. Yeah, no. so um, it does happen. I yep. mean, none of us are perfect. There's always no. software with bugs in it. Um, it just happens, but um, again, if you're, if you're working this into your workflow, Anytime you know you you see um, unescaped data, escape it. Even if you think it's it's been escaped before, uh, it's better to escape it more than once. Um, the 
one of the sort of general rules, um, actually Brad Williams uh, was an author of a, uh, a book called Professional WordPress that talks a lot about this. And um, uh, one of the things that he mentions is that escaping as late as possible is what you want to do. Like don't have a bunch of variables defined and escape everything at the top and then echo out a bunch of raw data down here because when you come back in a week and look at it, you're like, how come that's not escaped? You're gonna escape it again. So or something could happen in between. Right, exactly. Yeah. And so escape it as late, like when you're printing it out is when you should be escaping it. In the echo. Right, exactly. Um, so again, um, you know, adding these things to your code is great. Make them happen as late as possible. Sanitize as early as possible. Like, you know, just just make sure that your data is clean and when it's going out, it's not gonna harm anybody by uh, putting it out there. Um, and then the two, according to Wikipedia's that I did, um, are are in the, the links there as well. Uh, are there any? Oh, you got with that. Yeah. Are there any other questions about just security practices and, and development? Otherwise, yeah. I have a comment on yeah. staking. Um, if you use advanced custom fields um, as part of your workflow, um, their their uh, function called the get field. Um, they actually are not escaping um, these values. Mm. Um, so it's generally a good practice to, instead of the field, you declare a variable with get field and then escape it. Okay, and that's good to know. Um, there are, actually one of the, there are some WordPress functions that don't escape. Um, I think like things like site URL and get permalink, some of those don't, aren't actually escaped within WordPress core. Description. Yeah, so some of the, like anything that you're getting from the database, you should you should escape it. Like that's that's general rule of thumb. Like don't trust any data that's coming from the database. Like again, even if you write, like echo this string of text, escape it. Like just be safe um, because it's, it, it, it can be something that you're not even paying attention to that gets you in trouble. Um, and, and you're better off not having to deal with that then you know, having to try to figure out and track that stuff down and protect your users that way. Anything else? Cool. All right. Well, um, that's what I got from security. Um, to I don't know this now. Um, are there any questions? I know we have some people who are sort of new to WordPress or might have.